What's up guys? Welcome back to my series where we look at the best fighters in the world. I give you five things they're exceptional at with training tips so you can be a little bit more like them. And today we are looking at another Japanese fighter. Last week was Tension. Today we are looking at Masato, the two-time K1 Max superstar, one of my favorite fighters, one of the guys I listed in an episode recently where I said who are the top three guys who would be scariest for me to fight, and Masato was one of them. So today I will take you through five things he is exceptional at that make him a little different from other fighters, and maybe some tips so you can try and implement the tactics or technique he uses into your own game. Bring it into your own game. So guys, Masato, up next. So everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm thrilled to have you here today. Little tip before we move into the episode, check this out. Hand number one, hand number two. So fat, I got stung by a bee. If you ever get stung by a bee, you need to wash it quickly. I did not, and now this hand is just ballooned up. Although, on the plus side, it's kind of like a built-in glove right now. I can hardly even see my knuckles, just like I have my own glove here. But anyway, moving on, we are talking about Masato, somebody that I've been looking up to in the kickboxing world since very early in my career. Now, Masato does so many things really well, but I want to list a few things that he does a little differently, the things that other people are not exceptional at, that he is. So that will be our focus today, but keep in mind there's many other things that I could list on top of the five points which I will bring up in this episode. And the first thing I want to talk about with Masato is his uppercut. If you have watched Masato fights, you know over and over he lands his uppercut. And what is it about this uppercut that allows him to be so successful? Well, the first thing we'll talk about is his chamber into the uppercut. So most times when you're teaching a beginner how to punch, you want to make sure that they're not dropping their arm down and coming like this. We definitely don't want to do that because it leaves the head open. So we teach people to bend their knees a little bit, keep the hand to the head, and as I lift out, I let the arm extend from my head. That is proper technique, but when Masato does it, he, you know, throws his shot, he'll drop his hand as he's letting this one come out, and then he whips right up the middle. And the timing on his punch is exceptional. It's not kind of one, two, three it's something like one two three and everything on the first two punches is the setup and he's also spectacular at landing this uppercut from this really tight range here i'm going to go back to my orthodox stance he gets to this range here where he's glove to glove he just simply drops his arm and lights the guy up it's just right from here down up and i can't tell you how many times i've seen this guy land this shot and it's just the little subtle almost in proper technique which he executes which allows him to really be effective with this again it's not one two it's one two and this is one of those conversations that i've had with many students when they become more advanced i say okay now that you understand the proper technique we can start breaking rules we can start doing things technically incorrect so this is definitely not something that you want to try if you're doing your regular shadow boxing and your beginner intermediate you don't want to be moving around kind of one two one two every time throwing like that you want to be demonstrating proper technique but then you want to also recognize when you want to land the shot you're setting it up sometimes you just have to let this hand drop midway through the punch so you can really shorten the time between shots and get some more power because the, the truth is when you drop you can get that extra leverage with the lift so masato's uppercut thing of beauty you guys can try and add this in just keep in mind when you do drop your hand like this you are exposing yourself to counter shots so you just need to recognize that and if you see the counter shot coming you make the adjustment whether it's roll with a punch lean back whatever it may be now the next thing i want to talk about feeds right off the uppercut as soon as he finishes his uppercut he often does this follow-up technique and it is a double hand push something we don't see in kickboxing very much because technically Whenever I've tried to use it, the ref goes, no, 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 no pushing. But for some reason, Masato got away with it. Now, maybe that's just simply because he's in Japan. He was their star. They didn't really want to tell him things he could and could not do. Or maybe it was just the way he executed and it just didn't really look like as much of a push. But he'll use double palm. You know, he'll come and do what we just talked about. And then double palm, he'll just shove away. 
or he might be in tight, like that uppercut we talked about where you really jammed, boom, and then he just pushes them away. This double arm for him, somehow with palms out, shoving away, it creates something which just allows him to be so exceptional. He throws, he throws, he throws, he pushes. He gets to the inside, he bangs, he bangs, he pushes, creates that distance. Most of the time it's him backing up his opponent, but sometimes you'll see him right from here, push backwards with his arms and what he's doing when he stretches those arms out is he's creating a barrier around his jaw. So any hooks that come or straight punches are either going to bounce off the palms or bounce off the shoulders. The only danger on this one is the uppercut. I've always been very interested in Masato's ability to push people away or to move himself away. I've tried to implement it, but as I already mentioned, I did get warned in the fights and then moved away from it because I didn't want to have a point taken off. But it's a fantastic way if you can push somebody back. If I have my guard up and somebody comes in and they punch, punch, punch at me, I get really tight in my shell and I'm getting ready for a counter. But then before I can get to the counter, I'm getting pushed backwards. You're not going to be able to follow up and get that counter off. So I love the push method by Masato. Do I think it should be allowed in kickboxing? Yes, absolutely. If you can punch somebody, I don't understand why you can't push them. It makes perfect sense to me that you should be allowed to do that. And if it's something you can train into your repertoire of techniques and you can pull it off, but then move away from it if necessary in a fight, if you get worn, then I say 100% add it in. Next guys, I wanna talk about Masato's amazing boxing combos. I love when he gets going, when he starts putting three, four, and five punches together. And the big thing that I think allows him to be successful, like we kind of already talked about when we were mentioning the uppercut, is the fact that instead of being really picture perfect with each shot, hand coming back to the cheek, he kind of just starts letting his hands go a little lower, but it's not a big deal for him. We'll discuss that in one of our next points. But his ability to throw shots and just be so quick in between each shot is just amazing. It's very hard to block his punches and his technique is still crispy. I mean, yes, his hands are coming down low in the middle, but his technique is still on point and they're just beautiful, beautiful shots. One of my favorite guys to watch in terms of hand capabilities in kickboxing. Probably one of the better boxers we've seen. I'm not saying he'd be an exceptional boxer because that changes up everything, but in terms of who's one of the best boxers in kickboxing, I would say Masato is definitely in the conversation. If you guys are wanting to get your boxing combos on point, get them a little bit more like Masato's, it's basically being able to minimize the time between punches. So instead of one, two, three, it's more like one, two, three. And he's able to go one, two, three, four, and then he generally will either push to create that distance as we already talked about, or if somebody's countering, he's very good at rolling with shots. But if you want to get better at this and you're hitting pads, don't think one, two, three. One, two, three. Think something more like one, two, three. Hands are a little bit less perfect in terms of defense, in terms of guarding your jaw, but the punches go out faster, which makes you a more dangerous offensive fighter. It makes you more susceptible defensively, for sure, but you become much more dangerous offensively. And for me, when I wanna punch like Masato, I very rarely do it in shadow box. I don't kind of go something like that. It'll be when I'm on pads, when I'm hitting and I'm feeling that force of the, you know, the impact of a shot bouncing back and allowing me to get more power into my next one. That's when I really work this type of punching. In shadow boxing, I stick with crisp, clean technique. Now, much of what we've talked about so far leaves Masato's head susceptible to counter shots, but it's okay for him because our next point is him being so tough. How is he so tough? How is he able to throw shots when they're not coming back to his head and he gets tagged and he gets tagged again and he's taking so many head punches, but so rarely does it seem to affect him. Well, first off, let's say, okay, look at the size of the guy's head. He has a big head and I don't know if that plays a factor in it, but it very well might. Another factor is when he gets hit, his eyes are locked on. He's throwing, he's throwing, his eyes are locked on. It's like he sees the punch coming when he gets hit. He doesn't take it without seeing it. There's no surprise. I believe he sees about 99% of the shots that he gets hit by to the head for sure. His eyesight is unparalleled. And if you want to get better or you want to get more like Masato at taking head punches, that's a weird thing to strive for. I want to train 
to get punched, but you're not just going to stand there and let somebody hit you. It's not about toughness. It's about seeing the shot coming. So if somebody's doing defensive drilling, you know, you're parrying, you're working away. It's about not blinking, not closing your eyes, never losing sight of what's coming towards you. And this takes time and effort for sure, because you have to drill people punching and punching and punching at you, which is not always fun until you get down the defense and then it becomes fun because you block like 99 out of 100 shots, you hardly ever get hit. And when you do get hit, you know it's coming because it's not like you went like this and got caught by surprise. Masato's toughness is amazing. Something else I believe that makes him very tough is his ability to keep his neck fairly tense. There are certain parts of our body we want to keep somewhat flexed during a fight. For me, I very rarely let my stomach relax. There's always some tension. Even when I'm talking with you now, there's tension in my stomach. My finger, if I relax 100%, can sink in. But generally, I keep it like this. Where I push, it goes in just a tiny bit. A full flex, it won't go in anywhere. And I believe that, very similar to that, Masato keeps his neck fairly tense. So when he does take a shot, his head doesn't just bounce and get ragdolled and give him that concussive blow. And speaking of concussions, just the other day I put out a video on concussions talking about the different types of punches that are more likely to knock you down, more likely to give you impact. And we talked in particular about hook punches and the rotation of the head giving you issues, whereas the straight punches are not so much. So for Masato, being able to keep some tension here, if he does get hit, he rolls with it a little bit, but he's not keeping his neck loose and letting his head just go like that. That rotation is what's gonna really put you down. So eyesight, neck tension play a big factor in his ability to be tough. I truly believe that. If you guys wanna get a tougher neck, a stronger neck, something that will allow you to absorb shots a little better, again, I have a solo workout video up there that you can do at home, no weights required, destroys the neck, something you should be adding into your routine once or twice a week. And finally guys, now that we've talked about Masato's awesome uppercuts, we've talked about how good he is at taking shots, we've talked about his amazing combos, those three kind of lead into my last point, the thing that I'm most amazed by, and it's his ability to stand right in the pocket, right tight with an opponent, and just full power shots, just exchange, but everything he has, and to usually come out on top, usually be the one to score the knockdown and not get knocked down himself. His ability in the pocket is phenomenal, which is one of the reasons that I mentioned in a video recently, I went, oh, he'd be a scary dude to fight with. Even when you have Masato hurt, and you decide, okay, I'm gonna go on the hunt, I'm gonna go after him, he is fine on throwing shots and just going toe to toe with you. And because he's smart enough to get his head a little bit off the center line as he throws his punches, he doesn't stand right here. He moves his head off the center line. He blasts 100%. He keeps his neck tense. His eyesight is on point. If you end up in an exchange battle with Masato in the pocket, more likely than not, as we've seen with all his fights, you're gonna come out on the bottom and he's gonna come out on top. Being able to bomb in the pocket if necessary, is something I think every fighter needs to be able to do to a certain extent. Even if you're somebody who doesn't like to be there, you still want to be able to get respect from somebody. And if they come hunting at you, you want to be able to go, okay, we're going to stand here and we're going to do this. And we're going to work in the pocket. And I've done this before in my fights as well, just to show people I'm not scared to fight there. Usually once you do that once or twice with them, they don't want to come back. They know you're ready to throw down. If you guys want to get better at this, I actually have an episode where I talked about getting better at standing in the pocket, getting the counter shots going, getting your eyesight on point. You can check out that episode. But basically, to summarize it, it's the ability for me to throw my combos and still recognize what shots are coming towards me. I don't want to just throw and hope he doesn't hit me. I want to throw and go, oh shoot, he's throwing across. I'm going to get my head off the center line. Okay, I'm coming with the hook, but his hook is coming at the same time. I'm going to get my hand right up to my head. So I block and then hopefully land at the same time. Drilling with a partner back and forward where they come towards you, they go pop, pop, pop. And then in the middle, you do the same thing. You move your head, you move your head, you throw your own hook, you both throw the same combo, but one guy is gonna come out on top because he implemented the necessary tactics, head off the center line, eyes locked on, and if you happen to get hit, your neck is tense and you're not gonna get knocked down because you're a loosey-goosey. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, there are so many things we could talk about on Masato, about what makes him so good, but these are five points 
that are different from most other fighters. Five things that he brings or he brought to K1 Max that were unique, that allowed him to be successful. That's why I gave these points today and didn't focus on other things, which of course he's amazing at as well. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode on Masato, give the video a like, make sure down below, check out in the description, I'm gonna throw some links down so you can watch some Masato fights. If you guys haven't already, make sure you join the channel, get subscribed for lots of content coming at you daily right now. As always guys, train hard and I'll see you back here soon for another video.